I've been coming down here during the last few months and weeks doing a bit of running and walking along the river and it's a beautiful place to be. In fact actually on Saturday the 30th of May a friend of mine Declan and I decided we'd walk the whole of the what's called the Itching Navigation or the Itching Way. It was a long walk it took us 12 hours and it was about 30 miles in total. If you're going to complete a walk you have to keep moving from the past into the present and then stepping out into the future. And I've been considering, and I'm, I guess many of us have, because we probably feel that we're very much at a crossway or cross point in our lives at this point in time, or particularly in the life of the church. And the words that often come back to me when I think about a cross, crossroads or a, a crossway is when the writer of Hebrews in, thir in chapter 13 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that sense that Jesus is in history, is in the present, but he will also be with us into tomorrow. So I wanted to just bring this reflection around those thoughts, but also to introduce you to some of my favorite spots along this Itchen River. Well, welcome to this lovely part of the river. We're just north of Banbridge, just south of Shawford. To get to the present, you always need to walk through the past. I found that there are two misguided views about the past. Often the glorified past or the over-romanticized past. And then you get the other people that reject the past or want to ignore the past or forget the past. I think both of those are dangerous views. There's something precious and special about the past. It's good to reflect back. When I go, to, go on a walk, I often take photos so that later I can look back and, and see what the past looked like. We need to remember the past and celebrate the past and actually pick up some precious gifts from the past. But we have to move forward, stepping out of that place and into whatever the next scene, the next mile might look like. Hebrews 13 verse 8, the writer says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. I quite often wonder whether we as Christians uh, emphasise the yesterday and the forever and often forget the moment of today. We're interested in what God has done, of course we are, and that's really, really important. And we're absolutely fascinated with what God is going to do. But what is God doing? doing now. Jesus Christ is in the present, in the moment. We, we mustn't miss the moment. However much we might want to reminisce about the past and however much we're keen to know what the future has before us, it is today that we find ourselves in the present. We live in strange times with words like zoom and furlough and phrases like I cannot hear you or uh, what is going to be the new normal. Sue and I uh, recently, yesterday actually last night, were watching the film Peter Rabbit and uh, in Peter Rabbit there's this wonderful character, the cockerel, and the cockerel wakes each morning with great surprise that there is a morning. I know and no one told me that this was going to happen, that the sun was going to rise again. And he's so excited about the new day. We can take two extremes, I think, when we think about the future. We can take the extreme where we spend all our time and all our energy and all our efforts and all our planning in thinking about the future. Or we can take the position of being over fearful of the future, being uncertain and insecure and fearful and afraid of what might be ahead of us. But what we can be certain of is that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. And our confidence is not so much in what will happen, but in who we travel with. Uh, we arrived at this place and rested on, on our walk, but by the time we got here, in fact actually there's another five miles to go before you get to the source of the river in Cheriton. And uh, when we arrived here, I was beginning to feel quite exhausted. Uh, blisters on my feet, uh, my legs were beginning to seize up. I was beginning to struggle. In fact, actually the last five miles were really the toughest. When the writer of the Hebrews wrote that book, he wanted to encourage them that Jesus remains to be Lord all the way through it. Through the good and through the bad, through the difficult, through the tough times, he remains 
to be the Lord. Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. When I arrived at the end of my walk, I was absolutely delighted to see my wife. In fact, I'm always delighted to see my wife, but on this occasion I was particularly delighted to see her. She had arrived with the car. She said I looked like an old man walking up the street and I was really hobbling by that point. But to see her face to face was such a joy. And that's the promise that we have. That's the promise of the right of the Hebrews. That's the promise of the Bible is that as we walk into the future, as we move with Jesus, as we are reminded that he is the Lord of the past, the present and the future, and that he will always be with us, that one day we will be filled with joy as we see him face to face.